So the party leaders sure sound like they are in campaign mode already or certainly getting prepared for one. The House of Commons wrapping up the spring sitting today after passing key pieces of government legislation at the 11th hour, including the budget implementation bill, C-12, which is a bill to set targets for achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050. C-10 regulates online streaming giants and C-6 bans conversion therapy, but it's not clear whether the Senate will pass all of those bills before it breaks for the summer. So let's bring in three members of Parliament to discuss the end of the sitting and what lies ahead. Adam Van Couverdens, and until Ontario Liberal MP and the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Diversity, Inclusion and Youth. Eric Duncan is an Ontario Conservative MP and his party's question period coordinator. And Peter Julian is a British Columbia MP and his party's house leader. Good to see you all, gentlemen. Thanks for being here. Um, Mr. Vancouver, let me start with you. The past two years have been, uh, fair to say, a real challenge for MPs, uh, not just the pandemic and a minority parliament as well. Let me start there. How well served do you think Canadians have been by this minority parliament? Well, I think they've been very well served. I think we've got an extraordinary amount of stuff done, given the context of the pandemic and the minority parliament. The ones that you mentioned are certainly important bills. Uh, but I'm also a, a member of the Standing Committee for Indigenous and Northern Affairs. And we got UNDRIP done, which uh, means so much to so many people. And I just want to take uh, a t some time to acknowledge uh, the Indigenous leadership and everybody that contributed to getting uh, the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People implemented uh, as an act in Canada that uh, represents something very, very significant. And I think it's uh, it's one of the bills that I'm most proud to work on in the last two years. If Canadians, if you think Canadians have been really well served, why is everybody talking about the need for an election? I don't think everybody's talking about the need for an election. I'm certainly not. I'm talking about the need to continue to invest in Canadians and to continue to fight this pandemic. Uh, but the bills that we passed in the last couple of days are also really, really important. And it's important to recognize that, you know, it wasn't always easy. We had support from some parties particularly on the conversion therapy ban bill. You know, I, I'm the Parliamentary Secretary for Diversity, Inclusion and Youth, and I know that a lot of people in the House of Commons are supportive of the idea of protecting LGBTQ2 plus youth by banning conversion therapy. But I was really struck with the number of Conservative MPs. Over half of them voted against that bill yesterday. And we're seeing that kind of obstruction in the House of Commons playing games and debate and not allowing the, the bill to get to, towards the end. The same is true for the Environmental Accountability Act. And the same is true uh, okay. for other important things. Right. So, you know, I'm grateful for the for the support where we found. Mr. Duncan, let me turn to you here. Uh, how well do you think this parliament worked and how well did it serve Canadians? Well, I think as the official opposition, we had an effective couple of months. And in my role specifically in question period, it was a good chance to hold the government to account on the issues of the day. And I think raise a lot of the ethical uh, challenges the government's had over the last few months. Peter, there's been a lot of attention recently in a couple of weeks about obtaining the documents around the Winnipeg lab breach, uh, which is a, ma a major issue. And I also think came even further about the role and respect for Parliament. So I think uh, there's been numerous ethics issues we've been able to raise and talk about needing to secure accountability. But also at the same time, too, I think it divides uh, the Liberal Party between the way they talk a good game on a lot of things. But when it comes to the reality, they're not able to follow through or they just have a different standard or interpretation of what ethics or accountability or transparency okay. to Parliament Le is all about. Let me turn to Mr. Julian. Um, you know, Mr. Julian, the, the, the drumbeat of a potential fall election seems to be uh, picking up steam. And uh, I want to turn, it, it's good that we have you here for our discussion today. You're, you're the only MP with us here today who's experienced other minority parliaments in the last 16 years. So I'd be curious to know how you think this one compares when the Prime Minister talks about toxicity and obstructionism. Uh, is it as bad as that? Uh, obviously, obviously not, Peter. And, and that's the, the kind of spin which I think indicates to many observers, your, yourself and other journalists, that, uh, that the government is preparing for an election because it's been a kind of an over-the-top rhetoric. It doesn't reflect reality. The reality is uh, the government uh, has put forward a number of bills that they felt were important to pass, and they're passing. So uh, that I think the conclusions, the facts uh, speak for themselves. Uh, what the NDP has been able to achieve, what Jagmeet Singh has been able to achieve through this pandemic parliament is uh, pushing the government to actually put in place uh, an emergency response benefit that allowed people to put food on the table, the wage subsidy supports for students and seniors and people with disabilities, uh, even though the government uh, messed that up badly, uh, the rent subsidy for small businesses. These are all things that in a minority parliament, the NDP was able to push the government to do. And, and, and I think that's really the crux of why Mr. Trudeau seems so intent on calling an election. 
He doesn't like the fact that uh, the NDP and other opposition parties were able to push him to do things that otherwise he didn't want to do. All right, Mr. Vancouver, let, let me have you pick up on that. Uh, to Mr. Julian's point, look, uh, uh, if Parliament's not working, uh, all the obstructionism and the toxicity, uh, the government is getting through key bills it says it needs to get through. So what's the problem? I think Parliament is working, but I would acknowledge that there's been some obstruction. I have heard uh, Eric discuss, Mr. Duncan, my friend Eric, uh, talk about some of the respect for Parliament issues. And I just want to bring up that for the first time in over 100 years, the Conservative Party chastised a public servant in front of the bar this week uh, when Mr. Ian Stewart from the from the Public Health Agency of Canada was called. And, and I mean, that was well, well in fairness, I think all, all opposition seen. parties supported calling him before the bar of the House. Fine, but I, I was one of the least respectful things I've ever seen. It was absolutely atrocious, and I think it's, it was shameful. But to suggest that the Canadian government hasn't been there for Canadians is absolutely false. We have been there for Canadians. We have passed some really key bills, many times with the support of the NDP and many times with the support of the Conservatives, but oftentimes, uh, you know, despite not having that support. So Parliament is working really, really well, but Canadians need more. Canadians need certainty, and Canadians need a clear path forward out of this pandemic. And they're not going to get that with the Conservative Party, you know, blocking important bills and blocking Parliament and, and blocking debate. Okay. Uh, it's been really, really challenging for Parliament. But I think that they're talking about the obstructionism and that toxicity. They're talking about things that uh, like the Mr. To the bar. Okay, Mr. 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 Duncan, do we do we need a do we need an election? Well, in a minority parliament, the one thing that I've learned, having been even a staff member before, you always have to be ready for one. A one could happen at any time. But I, you know, I think the thing the Prime Minister does not like, and they mentioned on one hand about the bills and they tout those and then they complain. The part they're complaining about is having to be accountable to Parliament. That's the part. In the filibustering in committees, and I, I think of the Defence Committee, in the serious issues that women who are in our Canadian Armed Forces are facing, and I think of a, a young woman wanting to go into the Canadian Armed Forces, the lack of confidence they have in the government and the Defence Minister to do a lot of those things. So, um, you know, Peter, we look at these things in terms of the ethics violations. Uh, this week, we've been asking a lot of questions on Liberal List and Liberal MPs taking money from their budgets to uh, the Prime Minister's close friend in terms of supporting uh, some of their IT programs in that manner. The Prime Minister does not like the fact that Parliament uh, is making him accountable for their actions and their ethics violations and their failures. So, so that's what we're going to keep doing. That's what Parliament's for. That's the basis of democracy. So, so do you believe? Right now, do you go believe ahead, we? Do you believe it's time to go back to the people after what will then be in in the fall, two years of this minority parliament? We are ready for an election whenever the time comes. We've been on the record uh, that we will ask for support okay. of Canadians when the time comes. It's up to the government to bring things in to make Parliament work as part of that. We're we're going to hold to account. We're not going to change our strategy. And whenever an election comes. We've always been ready and always will okay, be in a minority me, parliament. You need to be. Mr. Mr. Julian, let me give the final word to you here. Uh, what uh, Do you think, well, I, you sort of suggested we don't need an election this fall, but uh, are you convinced one is coming? And um, what will the New Democrats be saying about uh, an election when we do get it, uh, about uh, the need for one or uh, the narrative you'll be pre presenting to Canadians when we get one? We, we, we don't think uh, that we need an, an election. In fact, with the Delta variant that is disturbingly spreading in a number of countries that thought they were through COVID, uh, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense for the government to be trumpeting an election. What we do need is things like pharmacare. What we do need is to have safe drinking water in every single community in the country. What we do need is supports that, uh, that people desperately need. The, the emergency allocation that the government wants to cut. These are the things that we do need. And I think Liberals have wandered off uh, uh, off the focus, and the focus really should be on people. If they do call an election, if Mr. Trudeau does call an election, the, the issues that Canadians are, are suffering through, the needs that Canadians need met, are still front and center because after six years of Liberals, uh, there's been very little done to meet the needs right. of Canadians. All right. Uh, gentlemen, listen, uh, thank you so much. Uh, the House is done. You're, you're, uh, it's been a challenging uh, pandemic parliament. Uh, we'll see what comes next. But in the meantime, and enjoy whatever time you get with uh, friends and family. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Peter. Thank Take care.